What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Tackle Talks. Today we're gonna to be talking about what's in my daytime plug bag. Okay, let's talk about what's in my daytime plug bag. We're gonna go through everything from pencils to bottom baits, but let's start with some pencil poppers. I normally carry two types of pencil poppers. These are both Mad Mantis pencils. Uh, this one is around five inches and one and three eighths ounce. This is around six inches and two and a half, I believe. So these each have their times that they come out of my bag. This one, especially if they're tinker mackerel around and, you know, they're a little bit closer in, I can cast this like a bullet. You know, pencil poppers is more of a finesse cast. Uh, if you lean all your weight into it and really try to send this out a long way, it's just going to tumble and kind of like this and you're not going to get that distance you really want to you know kind of lighter is better and this thing is going to fly like a dart through the air so i can both cast these a really long way this is if smaller baits around like tinker mackerel maybe sand eels uh, it's not my go-to for sand eels but especially around tinker mackerel in this mackerel pattern uh this is a great bait i don't hook myself there um this being you know a bigger profile is when bigger baits around bigger mackerel i mainly throw this around when big pogies are around big bunker um i can cast this thing a country mile you know this this can cast a long ways and this weighs an ounce more so same deal you're you know sending it out there with kind of a finesse cast you're not really you know, whipping it as hard as you can and because you don't want it to tumble, whip it as hard as you can. This thing's going to tumble. You're going to lose all your distance. Uh, you want to just send it out. It's going to fly like a dart. So that's it for pencil poppers. Let's move into poppers. So this is an atom popper. Uh, everyone should throw a popper at some point in time. They should have it in their plug bag, I believe at least. I like the dress treble on these. I feel like any plug with a dress treble just helps its action. Uh, I like this. It has a little swivel on the bottom, so it's got that 360 degree spinning hook, so it's harder for a fish to spit that hook. Uh, you work a popper like a popper. You know, you chug, stop, chug, stop, just bloop, stop, bloop, stop. Uh, harder to use a sinking popper easier to use a floating popper just depends on what you're comfortable with um next top water spook this is a dock it's a mini dock um great i use these two are used together for me almost all the time i rarely throw this if i haven't thrown this both imitating big baits so say you know your pencil popper is really aggressive action like that and it's going through the water and it's going fast and you miss a hit if something hits this it's not going to hit it again but you then quickly take that off your clip put this on your clip and throw this out there and work it real slow just that side to side action with that low frequency rattle that's going to one draw fish in and two they might come back for this and they're probably not going to come back for your pencil Last top water, jumping minnow. Everyone who's striper fish has thrown a jumping minnow. You know that little low frequency ball bearing in there. Great for smaller bait. So, you know, your sand eels, your silver sides, rain bait, stuff like that. This is great. You know, your back bays early in the spring, your estuaries earlier in the spring. This is a great bait. Just walking the dog, just like a big dock, but, you know nice and small small profile um does not mean small fish i've caught 40 inch fish on this you can catch 40 inch fish on this don't think small plug small fish it's not that's not what happens to this plug um you can work it in you know more of the summertime and in rougher surf i like to work it mainly when it's really really calm that's 99 percent of the time i'm throwing this um you know you can work it fast with the rod tip up you can work it slower with the rod tip down uh, i normally tend to go with a slower retrieve 
if uh, I'm getting hits, but if I know where the fish are, you know, I'm going a slower retrieve. If I'm not going rod tip up and just covering water, throwing it pretty fast. All right, next up is my swimming plugs, my minnows. Uh, I carry three types of ST minnows. I carry a chicken scratch. I carry a chrome black back. I actually carry four, sorry. So I carry a green mackerel, chicken scratch, black back, silver, and a bone. These three are what I use the most. I use all three of these on the rocks for stripers. Um, I love, a lot of people like to just straight retrieve these. I love to twitch them. Just a twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, reel a couple times, pause, twitch, 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 reel a couple times. I feel like that, especially around the rocks where you, you know, have less, less strike zone area, really gets the fish excited, especially in the wash. You know, if this is coming in and it's twitching and diving down like that uh, on a twitch and it's in the wash, they think it's a bait fish that's, you know, damaged, going to the rocks, been swept up by the current. So that's where I use these three mostly. Green mackerel. This one's special. So not to say not saying that it can't work for stripers. It's just not my go-to for stripers. You know, if they're on max, you'll know about it and they'll be on the surface and you'll be throwing a pencil popper. Or, you know, you can throw this for stripers, but I love this for big bluefish. You know, big bluefish on mackerel are insanely fun and sometimes they won't hit a top water um but they will hit this and so this is when i throw this is whenever i am blue fishing one thing i suggest about bluefish is you don't need expensive pop or pencil poppers you, you just don't uh you're gonna lose a lot of money because you're going to break off pencil poppers on bluefish they're gonna chew through your leader no matter what and you just need to know, like, you're going to lose some plugs. So throw, you know, some Tsunami pencil poppers. Throw some cotton cordels. You don't need your, you know, $30 Gibbs pencil poppers. It's just going to set you up for heartache. Okay. This is a mini bottle darter from North Bar. Um, I normally will fish, so, you know, SP minnows and stuff, is if it's, you know, light surf. This comes out if it's more of a medium surf because it's got that that little lip there, which helps it dive down a bit. Um, but you don't, you know, this is, so this is good. It can be good in calm surf. I like it in medium surf. Got a little rattle in there. And then, you know, it, it this lip's gonna help it dig into the rough surf. And if it's really rough, then I'm going with a full on bottle darter. Um, but normally that doesn't happen. You know, that's during like nor'easters and stuff. So it doesn't happen really often. Next up, I got two glide baits. I got the old trusty Sabeel. Um, This one's in a bunker pattern. If you fish the Cape Cod Canal, you know what a Sabeel is. If you've striper fished, you probably know what a Sabeel is. Uh, first thing I recommend is this section right here cannot hold a big fish. It can't. Uh, I'm sorry, but anyone who's had a big fish on this thing right here, this last butt section, I guarantee it's come off. Um, so I literally just take this off. I take that treble off. I take, or it comes with a double hook. I take that off. I don't put another hook on it. Sometimes I will put a dressed, uh, fake treble on the back. I'll just dress a single hook and, uh, take the hook off and just to give it a little more action. But I, you know, a big fish that's going to hit a bunker is going to hit the whole thing and it's going to get hit by this 4X VMC. Put 4X VMCs on all my baits. Nothing is worse than bending out a hook. Allen's Custom Lures Bunker Glide. Uh, really love this. Really, really realistic. I love that eye. Again, I'm a firm believer in different baits. You know, throw some different patterns that no one else has seen. Throw, you know, sure these look pretty similar, but this one a fish has seen probably a hundred times. This one, maybe not. So maybe throw this over this. Not to say they both don't work. It's got that nice little J hook on the back there with the treble on the bottom again, 4X VMCs. Uh, no split ring, so I do recommend either a clip or a loop knot.
All right, three baits left. We got our bottom baits. Bucktail. This is a jetty caster with a short and curly uh, trailer on it right there. Again, I love the jetty caster just because it's got that much hair. And the more hair you have, the more action you get out of it. So, you know, while your spro bucktails are okay, if you can get the jetty casters, definitely worth the money. You know, you're sending this out. I think this is a one ounce. You're sending it out there, letting it hit bottom, reel up a couple of times, slow, steady retrieve, barely off the bottom. Okay. I carry two different types of soft plastics with me. I carry an owl gags, a couple owl gags. And then I carry a Storm Shad. Owl Gags, this is a three quarter ounce. Um, I either, only two colors I really throw are Chicken Scratch and White, uh, just depending on the conditions. Chicken Scratch, water's a little dirtier, white, a little cleaner. Um, again, same thing with the buck, it's the same as the bucktail. You know, you can, except for the fact that you can swim this, you know, anywhere in the water column. Um, if the bait's up near the surface, swim it near the surface. But normally, if I don't, know exactly where the bait is in the water column sending this out there letting it hit bottom reeling it a couple feet off the bottom for those stripers you know hunkered down to come and get an easy meal this is obviously smaller profile you know small peanut bunker sand eels small mackerel you know stuff like that is going to hit this that's what you're trying to imitate storm shad big 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 soft plastic big soft plastic now, uh, well, there's a big misconception about this being kind of like a Guggen bait. Um, you know, not really for real fishermen, real surf casters. Uh, that's just not true. Like, you know, you see your people throwing their little storm shad, you know, pearl white off the, uh, off the jetty. This isn't that at all. This is a great bait. It's an underutilized bait, in my opinion, but it's a great bait. It's got a really, really heavy hook on it, you know, designed for big fish. I mean, this tail just kicks. Like, that, a striper wants that tail kick. That's realistic. It's got a big boot tail, big flat section on the bottom. Same thing as your out gags or your bucktail, just letting this hit the bottom. And then you're just slowly reeling that off the bottom. Kind of like a big, big swim bait in freshwater for largemouth bass. Just letting that tail kick, kind of like a HUD for uh, bath, just letting that tail kick, do the work for you. And then when you get that hit, you know, on all three of these, when you get that hit, uh, you really need to set the hook hard. So this one is the lightest wire hook, I'll get mini owl gags. Then you got this bucktail in the middle, jetty caster, medium wire hook, and this thing has a very heavy hook. You can see that, very heavy hook. Uh, so you really gotta jam that hook set you know, maybe even multiple, if it's a big fish, hit it two or three times, you know, set it up, set it up, set it up. You'll know when it's a big fish and you'll know to set that hook. Okay, guys. So that is what is in my daytime plug bag. Uh, I hope you liked it. Please leave me a comment, a like, subscribe, and let me know what you guys want to see next time. Thanks.